So, uh, we start with the first, um, uh, we start with three presentations. The first one is of the Ministry of Hamburg. Tobias Guvert uh, will do that for us. And he will talk about initiatives, making the water more attractive and how we use, how, how, how does Hamburg do this? And what can we learn uh, from them? The second presentation is of KCAP, architects and planners, and involved uh, 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 by, by the integrated waterfront transformation in Hamburg. And Jeroen Dirks will do that. And the third presentation is of Haven City Hamburg GmbH. Uh, Lucas Gilliard will do that. And it's about the relation between the city and the harbor authorities new planning tools, uh, legislative uh, challenges, all for new transformations. So I will ask Tobias, Tobias Gouvard, to start with his pre presentation. Tobias Gouvard of the Ministry of Hamburg. Okay, Tobias, where are you? <laughs> yeah, thank so you. I hope you can see the, can you see the presentation now? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Good. So, Thank you, Vera, and um, everyone else involved in organizing this. this uh, we're, we're very impressed by your um, your uh, uh, interest in Hamburg. We always thought uh, um, uh, Dutch cities had the edge on waterfront development and all of these things. I've I've moved to Hamburg um, uh, last year from London, and uh, I must say, from the London perspective, we've always enjoyed um, uh, looking at Hamburg and both Rotterdam and Amsterdam for as for inspiration of um, waterfront development. So I'm now really pleased to um, have taken over the the team of uh, leading on urban strategy here and uh, part of our responsibilities are to look at the whole city um, and the urban developments um, and uh, I must say uh, water edge and waterfront does not at the moment feature high enough, I think, for us on our agenda. So it's very good to to uh, to talk to you uh, in, in this discussion and and also learn some lessons and learn some get some thoughts from yourselves on where we're heading. Um, I think our focus it's a smallish team I'm working in. You know, we can only do so many things, but uh, we're tasked to. A look at all the kind of informal planning early stage think tank like and uh, and Mattis um, knows he's been helping us the other day with uh, our magistral and our uh, large larger roads and the densification along these and in the outer centers it's almost as if uh, Hamburg is kind of we, we've organized ourselves around the waterfront quite well we think in terms of development but we we're now looking at uh, the next stage on where the city can grow. So forgive me if we're not totally on top of the water agenda. But um, recently, my colleague Claudia, who's also in this meeting today and will say a few words uh, at the end, has brought up the topic of urban design and water fund yet again. I think we, you might know we have a an Oberbau director, like an, our uh, executive director, it's very prominent um, and very involved in uh, design strategy on all levels. And um, his his focus is is at the moment on the Magistral. But I think if he was here today, he would also have uh, uh, to say that we are very, very water focused. In any case, it's in our daily life. All our sites have usually have water edges. Um, and I'll ex des describe the history uh, well, how we got to this in a minute. Um, lastly, I think um, um, we'll also talk a bit about the eastern part of the city growing up and upstream along some of the riverways um, and where we also have some interesting industrial areas that are um, that we're looking at in terms of improving their water edges. So it's not just about um, housing. So let's uh, start. We don't have that much time for a big topic. Um, so 8% um, uh, in Hamburg, it depends how you calculate it, our uh, water of our of our metropolitan area. Um, but in the inner 
uh, CHE is 24%. Um, it depends how you measure it. We don't want to compare who's got more water, but I think one of the <laughs> statistics about Hamburg is that we've got more bridges than Amsterdam and Venice together, which I've never counted or checked on, but I've that was one of the f fascinating points. It, actually, when you're in the city, um, you don't really realize uh, because a lot of it is not actually organized along these water canals. Sometimes they're just simply fronts of buildings. Um, but we'll come back to that. So the city, Hamburg, um, here's an old plan, uh, a, a place for trading, uh, organized and determined by its location along the riverways, most prominently the Alster and the Elbe. Um, I should come back to in a minute the uh, the old port. Uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but it was just at the most southern tip of the Alster. Um, and you can see that the ships would come into a walled city, which would then distribute its goods through these um, man-made canals. Um, but of course, that was bound to change. So with industrialization, the ships get bigger. You know all these topics very well. Um, the hafen, um, uh, the, the port was was located along the larger, deeper river, the Elbe, um, and then um, the the goods were distributed through the canals, and there was there was warehouses all over the all over the city, but they increasingly started to migrate down um, to this part. Um, about this was about 1883 or so when uh, when this Speicherstadt was 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 located south of the inner city. The Speicherstadt is now our UNESCO World Heritage. I'm sure many of you will have been to Hamburg, um, but it's a fascinating, uh, architecturally fascinating, bricky place. Um, so. Let's just carry on. The, the city is therefore increasingly turning its back onto the river in, a, in, in the next uh, years of development. It's only in the 1980s that this amphibic, amphibic city is sort of starting to look back at the waterways um, and tries to locate itself again along the particularly the northern part of the of the Elbe. Um, and it's then um, uh, is at similar to where you were in terms of the um, talks on the port. It's still very much live and present. It has its own laws, its own planning authority. We've got nothing to say within that gray area. Uh, they've got 24-7 rules. They can do what they like pretty much. And then and it's not... Uh, it's not a, there's no discussion at the moment about giving large chunks back to the city like in your case it's uh it's uh, the largest port in germany the i think the second or third largest in europe maybe i think antwerp's uh, in a direct competition um so anyway that let's not talk about the economics but um it means that um there's an art sculpture here by the way not uh some sort of architect who's going to throw themselves into the, the depth of the river. This is the um, uh, this is the port just opposite the town centre. It's a fascinating contrast of buildings and housing along a kind of slightly raised plateau along the edge, which is where most of Hamburg resides. Um, the working at sea level is uh, mostly in the southern areas. We're looking at um, some of these ports. So you've got in comparison to London, where uh, I must say um, you always want to see something else other than a few tourist boats, here you get these uh, fascinating big container ships going in and out, and um, and the river side here is the the beach from the western sort of parts of Hamburg, the more affluent parts, um, uh, which has all been over the years um, been reclaimed for pedestrian use and recreation is. Uh, is a fantastic place to have within the inner city um, for everyone to use. Uh, and it's really the city's park um, uh, amongst other places. Um, so the classic kind of 
um, um, impression of, of recreation by the river. It's the only place really where you can dip your toe in the water. Um, we have a tide, we have a big level of tide differences. So it's it's a lot harder in other places to actually get the water, which we'll come back to in a minute. Um, but the port, of course, also causes emission, it causes noise. Uh, and the Hafen City uh, colleagues will tell you more about how they manage that in terms of bringing housing closer to it. So the, the Corona year, I'd say that we'll look back on a really hot summer and some work along the inner uh, the inner Alster, which is literally a large lake in the middle of Hamburg, has helped to repopulate the water. There's been a, um, a 90s project here to create more sort of terraces and steps down, um, and it by far never looks as busy uh, when I'm there. This is a particular festival. Most of the time, it's a large, big, big empty watery space with a water fountain in the middle and it leaves you wanting to just engage more um, and make more out of this water use um, because you can see the appetite of people is increasing with these paddle boards that you've probably got in Amsterdam everywhere as well so people have those stored on their balconies that pump them up and get on the get on the water so we'd like to see a lot more of that this is perhaps more of a classic touristy bit not very far from there but you can see some pontoons and restaurants but by far not enough and there is a there's a need to to improve um, um, tourism water and uh, use and and nighttime economy in the center which like so many other centers is mostly chain uh, stores and um, and a struggling kind of food and uh, consumer luxury consumer item based in a center that is not really appropriately adapted yet for the changes to come with internet shopping etc so we, we need to do more with the tourism with the evening economy and the and the leisure and culture and the water is a big part of that it says poor quality so i hope you can hear me can you still hear me yeah okay I'll carry on. Um, oh. uh, Tobias, can, can, is it able for you to finish in uh, three minutes? Is it, um, yes, my, my screen is frozen right now, so I can't okay. click forward. Can you hear me OK? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. I'll just carry on talking because this it's not there's not many too many points. Uh, we've got a flooding issue, of course, like many other big cities, so we need to protect the water edge. We have, um, therefore, uh, a, a struggle between um, wanting to get to the water and actually our um, environmental health, people wanting to raise the flood defences. So there's always um, a struggle between these two things. Um, a third of the whole inner city area would be flooded um, if there was a proper storm event, so it's not to be um, um, ignored. Um, I still can't, unfortunately, move my slides, but I carry on talking. We've, we've in the 80s, uh, developed quite a few example mixed-use um, projects along the waterway from offices to, to housing. Um, and we will see in a minute more about Hafen City and uh, uh, and the follow up project from that. The Grassbrook um, will probably also be um, mentioned. But as I said, um, east from there, um, my team is looking and thinking around what more existing built up quarters and industrial areas could also uh, do to be intensified and make more use of the water. Um, I should stop sharing for a moment and just kind of reshare my screen because it was frozen. Um, let me just. So can I move my slides now? Ah, perfect. So house houseboats, very few. We'd like to get more of those. Here's the flood, floodable area, and you can see the southern part, Willemsburg, where we had the international building exhibition. Um, 
uh, about uh, ten or so years ago or, or less um, is is an area which is rapidly being developed. Um, Hafen City has got its own particular flood defence mechanism by raised levels. We'll get back to that. But here you can see the attempts at getting the city back to the water, the 80s uh, to 2000 um, uh, area where I just showed the, the sort of beach and some parks and uh, and another project which I'll, I'll finish on, uh, the eastern expansion of the city, which is uh, a strategy in progress. Um, here's a picture of what's been done in the sort of 80s, 90s. Here's uh, what we're going to be talking about in a minute. Um, the grass book. Here's the sort of vision for the east of uh, Hamburg growing and unknotting some of the particular difficult bridge infrastructure, port infrastructure that doesn't really help you get to the river. And there's a there's a park in the foreshore of the river which uh, which has been looked at proactively but the project here is as i did um late so i did designed um um a, a tourist uh, and popular very very popular flood defense slash waterfront development which uh, some of you will have already seen it's worth having a look at it's quite cleverly makes sense of the step need to ha raise the flood defenses uh, create a, a, a huge drive for people to come and uh, get access, tourism, boats, cruise liners, etc. But in section also shows you how it creates some um, functional spaces underneath, which uh, help in a, and you can see them sit on the old timber kind of raised uh, um, flood defenses that used to be there before. So that's, um, that's a good example. It's, you might not like the architecture necessarily. You can see the water can flood half of this. Um, which it rarely does, um, and it's a lovely space to sit in the summer. So that would be an expensive nine-year project that's been finished uh, last year um, or the year before. Um, uh, and you can't do that everywhere. You can do that in the centre. Uh, other things you can do, for example, here is a reused uh, bridge, which is a, a disused bridge which was brought over to create a pontoon for a, a kind of meanwhile, but... Uh, yet permanent little project which I'd like to have many many more of uh, cafe um, creative quarter all these sorts of things coffee roastery you've got those in uh, Rotterdam as well they they are hugely popular with young people um, they're not um, too expensive to create and they bring people back onto the water you can see it's a sort of brilliant place this was only last week um, so it's not as busy right now, obviously. Um, but the, the the third project here, Claudia, are you with me? Can you quickly say something about yeah, this I... old power station? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Um, so just a few words. This is a very interesting project, an initiative from the university and some artists here in this former power plant, uh, which is called Kraftwerk. Bille, directly located at the River Bille, which is um, mostly unknown to the most people in Hamburg. They don't know this river. It's the third river besides Alster and Elbe. And uh, perhaps the next slide. Um, so, Tobias, can you show the next slide? <laughs> So, well, I just talk, um, you would see uh, the power plant uh, on a photo and uh, we have two other slides that show that this project of the university with the artists um, included two summer events on the water. Uh, it was a quite nice event with uh, uh, discovering tours. Yeah, that was, a, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and the next slide, this is the power plant, and this is the guided tour on the river Bille to discover the land and the water. And the next slide shows a panel discussion on the water on the river Bille. This, this was 2018 and 2019. Uh, last summer, unfortunately, we didn't have this festival. Um, and now this initiative, uh, they 
think to create uh, a new open space for cultural and a new place for cultural work, for social work, for manufacturing, uh, for sports, together with neighbors and sports clubs and in cooperation with the owner of this power plant. And uh, we support this idea and uh, we apply for a funding from the federal government. And uh, well, in case we are successful together with this initiative, um, well, Hamburg would contribute one third of the money needed. So we hope uh, we will uh, succeed and uh, we'll see in summer. And so with these impressions from the Billeland, this nice little project, uh, well, I back to Tobias. Yeah, well, back over to you. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for, um, we've, we're a bit over the time, so I'll, um, we can always uh, answer some more questions later. So thank you for that and Absolutely. sorry about the live technical issues. Okay, Tobias, uh, thank you very much. Then we go uh, to uh, uh, Jeroen Dirks of KCAP, the architects and planners um, from the waterfront in Hamburg. Um, Jeroen, where are you? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm here. I'm <laughs> trying to share my screen. I hope that's going successfully. Uh, you should be seeing a slideshow right now. Okay, um, I'll short you, shortly go through the Haven City project, which is an amazing project uh, done by the, the city of Hamburg, the Haven City GmbH, and uh, uh, we as KCFP, uh, together with a sister firm at that time, uh, Astok, uh, have been involved in uh, laying out the framework plan for this uh, huge development. Uh, and after us, of course, a lot of other designers have been uh, active in this uh, amazing uh, city development. Uh, it sort of re-establishes the relation uh, of Hamburg as a city with its waterfront. Uh, cities historically had a very um, a uh, difficult relation with the water. At one point, it was the, the water was their main trading route. On the other uh, aspect was that it could also be attacked uh, from the water side. So there was often a heavy defense wall and there were also uh, a lot of floodlands uh, around uh, the, the city. Uh, so what uh, was this mudland in, in front? where even uh, people were being hanged on the gallows which you see on the left. Uh, that was the site of the future uh, haven, the first uh, um, haven out of the, um, the city walls. Um, and that was a, a huge uh, industrial harbor with uh, the very specific uh, keys which allowed boats to moor. Uh, but unfortunately, this harbor also locked the city center from uh, its uh, riverfront because it was uh, a customs area where you could only go if you actually worked in that area. So as a uh, simple citizen, you were locked out and you couldn't reach uh, the waterfront. So it was an, an amazing opportunity when um, it became clear that this site would become available for redevelopment. Uh, and end of the 80s, uh, beginning of the 90s, uh, studies were done in which, uh, for example, Case Christians uh, was involved uh, at the time still at OMA uh, with Rem Kohlhaas, uh, Wilhelm Jan Neutelings was also uh, looking at this site. Uh, so thinking uh, started in an early phase, uh, but concluded in uh, a very important step, uh, which was the uh, 1997 international competition where KCFP with Astok uh, became the winner with this uh, framework plan, uh, which was less uh, experimental than the, the previous plan, but had uh, a very strong identity through uh, extending the block morphology of the inner city to, um, uh, to the waterfront. And water was always a key element in uh, the identity uh, of this plan because of these large harbor basins uh, added so much quality and the landscape design and landscape stru structure was key in uh, emphasizing uh, this. So the whole Haven city has about 10.5 kilometer of dockside promenade and 3.1 kilometer of Elp embankment, which is of course an amazing asset to, uh, to deal with. 
Uh, I won't go too much into the uh, development of the uh, real estate, it's uh, especially uh, a lecture about the public space and the relation with water. Uh, but it's essential for Haven City that's a very mixed uh, uh, development, uh, which already attracts a lot of liveliness uh, to uh, this part of town. Key to this development was also the uh, connection to the existing city, uh, uh, the existing city. So many new bridges were uh, introduced to uh, make a strong relation from the city center to the water and also to uh, make uh, local connections between uh, these new uh, city districts of the Haven City. And uh, a third diagram shows that at key locations, uh, iconic programs and iconic buildings were introduced to activate uh, those uh, those tips of the of the piers and these uh, key uh, moments where uh, the city meets the water. Uh, in the early stage, the Santor uh, dock was uh, taken into use and developed. Uh, and all around those docks, uh, public space became a key element. All the docks stayed also public, so all the the access uh, of pedestrians around the water was uh, was organized in a very attractive landscape, which really became one of the uh, the main destinations uh, in the city. It's also interesting to notice in the plan that. Uh, the docks and the water spaces were often extended into public spaces which uh, connected to the, the head of these docks or that, um, and that's Amlose Park here in the middle, uh, some uh, areas um, introduced deep uh, views and, uh, and long sight lines towards uh, the water so that accessibility of the water uh, really became key. There was also thinking on putting activities on the water, which I think is very much the theme Rotterdam is also thinking about. Uh, this is an early plan of uh, AMBT, the landscape architect, where in uh, the upper dock a historical uh, ship harbor uh, is realized. And in the lower dock, there was a plan for a marina with also uh, more floating boardwalks, uh, but that was never realized, unfortunately. Uh, there was uh, in the lower dock um, a, an, uh, a point for the water bus uh, uh, plant. So that is that is actually in um, in the plans, as you can see on this picture. Um, the historic ship harbor is very much uh, what we know in in Rotterdam, also in the Leuvenhaven. However, here uh, more effort has been put into the actual landscape design of these floating boardwalks which are really uh, a very attractive space uh, to go to, uh, even if you cannot access these ships, and which also provides space for events. Uh, tall ship races are organized there. So the whole boardwalk uh, as a landscape design is a, is a very interesting feature. It's floating and it uh, goes up with the tides, so also these bridges are very interesting in their dynamics. This Lose Park I showed earlier is one of these big parks which, which makes the connection uh, to the waterfront uh, so that uh, yeah, from deep within the development, the water is uh, made visible and uh, accessible. Uh, one of the key elements in the whole Haven City development was uh, dealing with uh, flooding issues. Um, Therefore, the whole site and all the development area, which is shown here in uh, in beige, uh, has been raised by three meter, which actually also allowed for a, a convenient parking solution underneath, and which uh, introduced a new datum, uh, which was then uh, not flooded. Um, interesting is that this datum has a setback from the historic uh, key wall, so that there's always a, um, a close proximity to the water on a lower level. So it introduces actually a two uh, level public space, uh, one on the historic key level, which then also allows to have these beautiful details of the uh, historic keys, and then a new key level, uh, which is uh, elevated and which gives also uh, views to the water from that uh, higher perspective. Uh, so 
this whole lower landscape uh, is also floodable and it's also designed uh, to be able to uh, to be flooded which which happens occasionally um, and adds uh, some extra drama uh, the big challenge of course is then how to activate this lower landscape uh, because all uh, facilities connecting to that uh, level uh, have to be flood resistant and therefore at key places um, shops and restaurants are integrated in this uh, lower key wall but they uh, have these very heavy steel doors which uh, protect them against flooding when uh, that occasionally happens and then yeah this cafe or restaurant is uh, is closed for the moment the great uh, aspect it also has is that uh, the landscape is uh, is very three-dimensional so it steps up from this lower level to this higher level which of course introduces uh, amazing steps and seating platforms along the water uh, which then occasionally uh, can be flooded uh, this also shows how these stairs uh, get uh, different uh, morphologies across the uh, across the plan so there's very different solutions uh, to get from one level to the other um, introduced also these key walls get a lot of attention also designed by AMBT uh, not to be bland uh, closed walls but really have a, 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 a tactility and attractiveness to the whole uh, public space uh, experience the interesting of also keeping this lower level was that a lot of the heritage of the harbor can also be maintained like the cranes which are really uh, um, very char characteristic for uh, this uh, this harbor area the other uh, uh, strategy was to place these uh, iconic programs and iconic buildings uh, at the waterfront which really became anchor programs to draw people to these uh, more remote uh, parts of the uh, of the development. Uh, yeah, the most renowned is of course the the Elb Philharmonie, uh, the Philharmonic uh, concert hall with a hotel on top of uh, an old uh, warehouse designed by Herzog de Meuron, uh, which is of course now a, a key landmark uh, and, and cultural temple for the city of Hamburg um, but uh, another one is still in the making which is the end of the Uber Seequartier which is the uh, uh, the center uh, district of uh, Haven City um, where this also shows this line on how uh, the Haven City connects to uh, the city center uh, drawing uh, program in at that point there is already a cruise terminal um, which uh, has always been uh, activating this uh, quite remote uh, site uh, so with temporary buildings uh, and in the future uh, there was also an iconic landmark plant uh, designed by OMA but all the money went to the landmark by Herzog de Meuron so there were some budget cuts uh, on this site unfortunately uh, and this is the uh, current proposal um, consisting of a, uh, quite a commercial program with retail uh, as a big spine coming from the center and a very active uh, uh, harbor front. Um, this is the spine, uh, also a two level uh, public space along the water. Uh, and this is then the plan for this uh, harbor front, also making use of this two level uh, um, aspect to, uh, to introduce these tribunes. Across the, the dock, there is the Haven City University, a university for design, which is also one of these key programs drawing in a lot of students, very well connected to a new uh, metro station. And uh, on the right side, you see the Lose Park, this key public space. So this is also one of these landmark buildings and, and programs drawing liveliness towards the waterfront. And then the last one uh, being designed by David Chipperfield will be the Elp Tower, a uh, really huge uh, tower at the tip of, uh, of the Haven City development, uh, also soon to be realized. This is the uh, area which is still uh, very much under development, the Bakenhaven, the last uh, phase of uh, the uh, Haven City, now also very much under construction. And there, um, a landscape was introduced into the Haven, 
uh, designed by Atelier Leudel uh, and really uh, filling in the harbour, uh, similar to what Rotterdam is planning for the, the Rijnhaven and the, the Maashaven. This one very much takes on uh, forms of dikes uh, and not that much uh, floodlands or, or doing that much with uh, floodable uh, ecology. Um, but uh, still, yeah, very interesting in, in its typology. There's also plans to build into that harbour basin. It's a huge harbour basin, so there was a lot of thinking on what can be done. Uh, so architecture uh, and the sort of uh, buildings in the water can also be quite an interesting idea for, for Rotterdam. And as a last part, um, I'll shortly touch upon the jump over the Elbe what is the Graasbroek area, which is not Haven City anymore, but then uh, the next stage also to be developed by the Haven City GmbH. KCAP has uh, touched upon the potential of this site uh, some years ago when ha uh, Hamburg was still a candidate for the Olympic City, uh, for the uh, Olympics. Um, so there we looked how an Olympic City could be transformed uh, from uh, Olympic venue to uh, a new piece of city. Uh, but then the, the citizens voted against uh, uh, candidating for uh, attracting the Olympics because of uh, the recent terrorist attacks and threats. Uh, but more recently, uh, some years ago, a new uh, competition was uh, launched, which was won by uh, Herzog de Muron, with landscape architect Vogt uh, to also start this uh, development, also introducing uh, a large park and there um, the existing docks uh, also have a bit more uh, flood land. Uh, there is um, there's some floating bars and swimming pools uh, as an activation and there's also a historic ship uh, as activation alongside these uh, parks and promenade uh, waterfronts. Also good to mention is that uh, to make this plan, there has been a lot of uh, consultation. Uh, there's a big uh, information pavilion where the uh, a huge model of the Haven city is displayed and where every uh, new project, being it uh, a master plan for a sub area or being an architecture competition is being communicated uh, and where people can also interact uh, with uh, the Haven City uh, GmbH to uh, come up with uh, initiatives. So yeah, to conclude, um, some lessons learned from Haven Cities is that uh, routes and view to the waterfront are, are really key. Uh, so um, you can make a very nice landscape, but if nobody can get there, uh, it's quite useless. Uh, you can draw people there by uh, landmarks and, and, and public programs which, which bring people to these spots. Uh, a high quality public space is of course uh, key. Uh, there, uh, the proximity to water and, and floating public spaces can be a really interesting asset. And uh, it's also very important to program activities on the water like uh, marinas uh, or floating uh, swimming pools or, or bars. Um, transport over water is also uh, key, uh, like the water bus uh, in Rotterdam, we have that, and the water taxi. Um, flood resilience is, a, is an important theme, uh, which can really be seen also as, a, as an opportunity. And nature inclusiveness uh, is something which can get uh, a bigger focus. I have to admit that uh, in the time of planning of Haven City, uh, with these very um, mineral and hard key walls, uh, things like uh, floodlands or uh, uh, nature inclusive uh, landscape design was uh, not as uh, not as explored as it could be. And as a last one is to involve stakeholders and foster initi initiatives on the water. So that's how I would like to conclude. Thank you. Okay, okay, thanks, thanks. thanks a thanks lot, a lot uh, Jeroen, for your, for your presentation. presentation. So, so a quick, quick go, go further, further with the presentation, presentation with Lucas, Lucas Gilliard of uh, Haven City uh, GmbH. Lucas, are you in the house? Oh no, Lucas. Uh, yeah, go ahead uh, with your presentation.
Hi, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, my name is Lukas Geert. I'm working for the Hafen City GmbH. We are a public company fully owned by the city of Hamburg, um, responsible for developing Hafen City. Um, so our company basically started from the organization of uh, that uh, master plan competition uh, where KCAP won uh, up to now where we have realized about 50 percent of the of the real estate in that area uh, over the last years we also have uh, taken over the responsibility of developing other areas um, close to the harbor grasbrook you have seen already um, also the area billebogen uh, where tobias showed a couple of pictures at the end of his presentation and we're also developing a project which is called sign city uh some of the pro a project that doesn't have water but has uh, a lot of other exciting features um i will not talk a, a lot about half and city as a project um, specifically and, and what we have designed there I, I think you had very good presentation just before i will talk a little bit about the port city interface in terms of governance and what are the challenges to activate our waterfront in half and city but also in other places um, here you have an overview of, of Hafen City again. Um, here you also see the other areas which we are working on. Um, I put it underneath. Hafen City is a former port area. Grasburg is still a port area, but hopefully soon be a former one. Um, so it's if you if you look back 20 years, the city basically ended north of Hafen City. Um, and there are a couple of things which triggered the development of Hafen City. So when you think back in the end of the 1990s, we had about 120 hectares of land right in the city center, which were harbor, uh, however, with low productivity, you could say, uh, simply the changes in, in how harbors work. You know that uh, only well in Rotterdam, how the in Rotterdam, the harbor has really grown out of the city in Hamburg, not so much. It's really quite in the city but this particular part where Hafen city is was just not suitable anymore for for harbor uses so one of the starting point is that obviously a lot of people recognize there is a high value for this waterfront and you could extend the city center at that and there would be a self-financing capacity of that project so there's really this idea of that you can finance a big urban development transformation by itself really was a was a precondition so that half and city started at the same time at that time there was the idea of a cross financing that the urban development could finance harbor expansions in other parts of hamburg i think also a very crucial point at that time because <clears throat> since then not many other parts of the harbor basically none of the parts has gone out of harbor use and why half and city went out was that they assumed at that time that the Hafen City development could finance a new container terminal. Uh, this was given up then later on uh, as part of also improving some of the aspects of the Hafen City development. So it hasn't been realized in the end, but as a, as a triggering point, I think it's very important. And then the third part is that uh, very important also for the development of Hafen City is that within the harbor, um, the city or the harbor port authority um, retains ownership of the land. So this is optimal precondition of developing half and city and also uh, when you think about the self-financing aspect. The development then started in, in 1997 with a special asset created where basically all the land was put in as a, as a financial vehicle to kickstart the development. Then we had the master plan competition. Our company was renamed in 2003 and take on the Hafen City name. Um, let me talk a little bit about the interfaces that needed to be done at that time. So we basically have two different planning regimes in, in, in Hamburg. Uh, Tobias touched upon a little bit about it. Here it's shown in a graphic as well. You might look at it after that presentation. So we have the standard planning processes, which are a little bit uh, based on different territories, Bezirke here in Hamburg and then different agencies who does that. And then we have the port authority, which is very centralized, like a one agency who has all the planning power within uh, the Hamburg Harbor. And they both based on different planning laws, um, 
basically Hamburg plans as all the other cities in Germany on the regular building law, but the Parba does it differently and has a harbor development law, which is based on. And when Hafen City was founded, and that's basically the, the, the origin of our company, is the idea was to at least introduce a development company who uh, kind of can develop the city out of one hand, but obviously we are still part of the, of the regular planning regime. One of the issues that you really need to think here in Hamburg is that the proximity between the harbor um, uh, and the city. You see on the on the bottom right on this little map, you see actually the the former border where the harbor ended. And now you take this big chunk out, and you are just a couple of hundred meters away from from industrial uses. So. Um, uh, compatibility with, with emissions was a big uh, topic at the beginning, uh, noise, but also the protection from potentially hazardous environments in the harbor and so on. So a specific legal framework needed to be developed in this part. Flood protection, you have already seen it. Uh, maybe trying to explain the systematic behind it, the, the reason why it is a challenge for for Hafen City is because the harbor has a different flood protection regime than the city, while the city basically protect has a public flood protection with an embankment where the city behind it is protected from the flooding. The harbor doesn't have that. The harbor is organizing it privately. So every company, every um, business within the harbor has private protection schemes. Uh, in order to protect their properties. And when we took over uh, Hafen City or the, the land which will become Hafen City, we basically needed to deal with it. And then we introduced this level of raising the road level and then the buildings are basically adjoined to that road level and have only private protection at those waterfronts as Jeroen showed you. Um, another thing, another interface that we had to deal with, which doesn't exist anymore, is that Hamburg was a free port, so we had a customs border right in the city, and you see a small little picture here uh, of a checkpoint, uh, which we took over in 2013, when the free port was also abolished, uh, and you see here on the map how this really cut through half the city and parts, and even the eastern end, which we are developing, it was, it was a free port until 2013. It, we're going back to the financial model. So what you see here is the land ownership in Hafen City and how it changed from 2000 to 2017. Uh, in 2000, you see, we basically took over the majority of the land. Other big landowners are the uh, German Deutsche Bahn Rail Authority, as well as the federal government who has some customs pro properties here in, in Hafen City and still has. Um, basically the only two parts we haven't bought really. Um, but you see the starting point, but we had all this land available uh, for the development and financing it. And you see over time, the vehicle of financing this development is, is selling the land in certain parts where properties are built on. Those are those yellow parts have come up. And out of this act of of selling the land, we are using this land value for two different things. The first is we obviously realize some, some financial income, build infrastructures such as bridges, streets, parks, key walls, promenades, uh, partly the underground, build now community houses as well. And it is kind of what we, from the direct income that we get. But what we also try at the same time is transfer some of the financial value into the real estate properties that are there as public values. So for instance, think about architectural quality, um, the activation of ground floor users, different price structures in housing, commercial uses, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, high uh, environmental standards, a mobility sharing system, um, a heating supply system, which is CO2 uh, neutral, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of different things where we finance both public values that are incorporated into the goods of the of the buildings as well as direct public goods as as, as infrastructure that we're building and one part that at basically in this model which is not included those are the waterways uh, what you see here is a map of hamburg um, showing all the waterways which are 
under administration of the Hamburg Port Authority. And you see that this map is much bigger than the map uh, Tobias showed you in the beginning, where basically the land area of the port is shown and what kind of administrative rules uh, they have there and where they do the planning. The waterways still in Hafen City are under administration of the Hamburg Port Authority uh, based on a port traffic shipping law. Um, and you see how this also extends to the west of Hamburg and also to the east, where obviously we have also commercial sh shipping happening. And when we look at the situation of the water in, in Hafen City, you have here, uh, unfortunately, the same building from two different angles. I didn't find pictures from the same angle, but you see on the left side uh, a situation you can see basically every day where uh, the tide is low and we have uh, sedimentation happening uh, in the harbor um, where it basically gets more more dry in Hafen City and then we have on the other side storm surges that's something you can't see every day but you can maybe see once twice a year uh, where we basically have the water suddenly 10 meters higher than before. Um, the right situation um, we have already seen, but the left situation, I mean, it's also something is a challenge. The maintenance that goes into the waterways is something that is constant and so far has been financed by the port activities and maintaining the waterways for the port activities. Now we don't have that port activities more, so that is something I think we need to think about as a challenge. How do we maintain our blue infrastructure? and not only maintain our green infrastructure. And for Lucas, activate... Can you, Lucas, can you finish your presentation? Yeah, so just give me, give me two minutes and I'm finished. Uh, uh, and you, you see basically what we're doing on the water side here is we have some pontoons, for example, for this historical harbor here, um, which is itself is both a technical challenge because of the tide as well as the financial challenge I've shown you. Uh, we have reclaimed some of the land. That's possibly some, the easiest way of activating that water, but obviously it's getting also rid of the water. Uh, and what we're doing is often is having more of an event character um, because that is something which we can organize and the event itself has a financial model behind it, but it's not a permanent use. And you see here, this is an event from 2004. 2009, 16, you see that's something which has been constant through the development of half and city. Yeah, thank you very much. And this, by the way, is also a picture of the Blue Port and Cruise uh, uh, Day event. So, I man, this is obviously the biggest one, not only related to half and city, but the entire harbor and the city. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Lucas, and thanks uh, also uh, Tobias and uh, Jeroen for uh, your presentations. So we're now going to uh, to our panel uh, for uh, for a quick uh, reflection uh, on these uh, presentations, and I will ask uh, each uh, member of the panel uh, to introduce yourself uh, briefly in one sentence and give a first short uh, reflection on the presentations about Hamburg and the situation uh, in that city. Uh, we have in the panel uh, Matthijs van Ruyven, Head Urban uh, Planning in the mu Municipality of Rotterdam, Marco Vermeulen, designer uh, of studio Marco Vermeulen and also designer of our Atlas, where I spoke about, Sander Waterval, developer of The Wickle Boat, uh, and dr driving force behind the Water Manifesto. He will tell you something about it later. And Daan van der Haven uh, of the Water Taxi Rotterdam. So, Matthijs, uh, can I ask you to give a first uh, uh, reflection and introduction of yourself, please? Um, yeah, hello, everybody. I think you hello. introduced me uh, quite well already. So, head okay. urban planner or urban designer for the city of Rotterdam. Um, just I think a month ago I was at the Magistralen event Tobias mentioned, so there Hamburg was learning from Rotterdam. Uh, it was about the bigger infrastructure and how to transform. And here it's the other way around and I think there's a lot to learn. And also you see that um, I think in, in all three stories is also the struggle or how to deal with climate adaptation, how to realize things, also the time-consuming uh, development 
Um, it takes a lot of time. But a few things that I think are really interesting is that the um, the bigger approach that Hamburg has over the last decades of really activate different waterfronts um, and also doing that in an in integral way. So it's about the pedestrians, about activating the, 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 the case or the keys. It's also about development. And I think that is really interesting. What I always like about Hamburg is the visibility of the port itself. Um, which is, I think, a, a fantastic asset. Uh, I always like to see the cranes in the distance uh, here in Rotterdam and uh, in, in, in Haven City, that they are always there. I'm, I'm really curious of how you deal with especially the noise, because that's a, a big issue. But I think what, uh, what Jeroen showed, uh, and that was really interesting, is that the, 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 the bigger network of all the waterfronts, all the different caves, the river basins, and combining them together and making a really attractive public space. And then also the different layers. So you've got the, uh, the plus one layer, which is uh, uh, flood free, so to say. Then you've got the, K, the level of the case, and which is really interesting with the, the amount of detailing in the walls and everything. Uh, and then you've got the the little parks and uh, also the floating uh, floating um, uh, boardwalks. So you you've got these different layers, uh, which are really interesting. So the, the one layer is more of the city as a whole, and the other ones can be really well more intimate. And I think that is really interesting. But what you also see is that especially the port basins are really interesting. The bigger river itself is too much for the port and perhaps it's also more to see and to have the boats on uh, and the, the, the smaller port basins hopefully well connected in Rotterdam as well but you see that in Hamburg is, 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 is really interesting so these levels in height and I think by making it a big um, these bigger projects and also this Hafen City company uh, which, of course, is a bit difficult perhaps for the city development department that they also have a company to deal with. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, they are a really strong force of realizing all these projects and also uh, realizing a, par a park beforehand in the, uh, what's, uh, the, 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 the Bakenhaven. Um, they have to force the capacity and also the money to invest in a park and then develop. And, uh, I think that is uh, interesting to see that integral approach. So uh, by looking at, well, what um, Lucas Gilead was saying, the income, the public goods, and also the public values that you incorporate in the development, I think is interesting if you uh, look at it as a bigger development. So on land with the buildings, on the case and on the water and as, uh, as a whole, and that perhaps make it, makes it also easier to... Um, um, well, have smaller uh, initiatives to place them or to perhaps uh, partly uh, co-fund uh, these. Whereas in Rotterdam, but it's always quite difficult. But if they're yeah. part of the bigger project, I think that, well, it is a big project. That's perhaps a downside, but it's also really a, a bonus that you can introduce a lot of these small uh, activities. Uh, so that could be a lesson for Rotterdam of also lo well, looking at the whole river and water system as a big city project. <laughs> okay, thanks Matthijs for your first reflections. Okay, Marco, uh, can you give a reaction uh, on the presentation? Yes, thank you Vera. Good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Marco Vermeulen, I'm an architect and urban designer. Um, I have my office on the banks of the River Maas here in the center of uh, Rotterdam. And uh, as Vera already mentioned, uh, we are indeed working on the water atlas uh, in which we try to get grip uh, uh, on the underlying logic, so to speak, um, of the water in terms of hydrologics, ecology, regulation, uh, and above all, uh, the use of the water. Um, so transport, leisure, um, and also the still present transportation of cargo. Um, well, looking at the two lectures, uh, three lectures, uh, sorry, um, I think there, was a, there are a lot of similarities uh, if you compare it to Rotterdam. Uh, of course, a big harbor, that has slowly moved out, or as I understand, in a slower pace in Hamburg than it does in uh, uh, in Rotterdam. Uh, but uh, it leaves uh, underused bazans, as we call it in Rotterdam, dead water. 
Um, uh, the Elbe also, like the Maas, still functions as a transportation X uh, with safety regulations. So I'm very curious uh, how Hamburg deals with that. Um, then, of course, there is the risk of flooding. Um, uh, also, Rotterdam and Hamburg, they both have an outer dike urban area. Um, and Hamburg has an unprecedented set of spatial typologies and solutions. I think that's very interesting. Um, and as a student, I already went to Hamburg looking at those solutions. Um, and there is a need, or you might call it a quest, for improving the city culture and identity. Uh, I think in both cities, but this is at least very much the case for Rotterdam. Being a harbour city used to be very naturally. Uh, and by moving out, uh, the harbour is slowly moving out, it becomes less naturally. Um, so the stories uh, that we just heard, they were very, they were beautiful stories and very much focused on the riverfront development. Um, so the story, there was a lot of focus on building, bridges, uh, land rec uh, reclamation, boardwalks. Um, but we haven't heard so much yet on the actual activity on the water itself and how you can trigger that. And in Rotterdam, we are also very interested in um, how we can use the water itself, of course, in relation with the use of the, of the banks, uh, because slowly but surely we start to regard uh, the, the river also as a central public, well, green space, um, and therefore also the space as a, well, as a temporarily, uh, a place for temporarily activity on the water. Um, and we also noticed that it needs a different set of rules than conventional urban planning. So we also would like to learn from Hamburg in that sense. Uh, how can you tri trigger or improve activity and keep the river safe at the same time? Uh, how does Hamburg deal with that? And what kind of tools do you have in programming and maybe even designating areas? Is it just boardwalks or is there more? Do you thematize certain areas? Uh, so that's, that's merely a question uh, I have. Then the second question is, I'm not, if, I'm not sure if I'm even allowed to ask so many questions, but who's really in control you know, of this thematizing and uh, is it kind of matchmaker or uh, who, decides, who decides which activity is welcome and which activity is not welcome? Uh, and maybe related to that, what kind of facilities do you offer for those uh, uh, ships docking, docking in? And the last question I have um, is, uh, uh, like I said, in Rotterdam, the harbour activity has moved out slowly but surely. And I wonder if there is any effort in Hamburg to keep harbour activities really into the city. Of course, you have a visual on the harbour, uh, but in Rotterdam, we struggle with, let's say, the ad identity as a harbour city. And we are also trying to uh, to look for ways of keeping this activity in. Thank you, Thank you Marco. A lot of questions. Sorry uh, for that. Yeah. Uh, going to uh, Sander Waterval, uh, entrepreneur on the water, you, you can say. Sander, go ahead. Uh, thanks, uh, Vera. Uh, very fascinating. I was there, I visited uh, Hamburg uh, last uh, holiday in the summer, then it was still allowed to. Uh, so I did, and I was inspired. So uh, in the pre-discussions, I found out that uh, there are quite some similarities with uh, in the um, Rotterdam uh, situation. So that's great. And myself, my background is uh, yeah, I'm an entrepreneur uh, on the water, uh, one of the initiators uh, of the um, of a small harbor in the city center and of uh, wickle boats, tiny houseboats on the water. And um, yeah, uh, one of the initiators of the Water Manifest, uh, which which we uh, uh, offered to the um, uh, to the aldermen, and um, that was. Yeah, the, the starting point of building the, the water atlas a couple of months later. Um, we have a group of uh, around 20 uh, other entrepreneurs and uh, citizens of Rotterdam. We think that in Rotterdam, the water should be more treated, uh, a more uh, friendly treatment and uh, facilitated for uh, temporary uh, initiatives. Um, I think uh, in the pre-discussion with uh, uh, Hamburg, with Lucas and uh, others, uh, it was already the same uh, discussion that also, even if you have a company like a mass company or a company like Haven City, a GmbH, 
it's difficult uh, uh, because uh, of the complexity on the water to facilitate initiatives uh, and uh, also financially uh, to 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 yeah to make it uh, uh, possible. Uh, I think that's uh, something uh, you have to find out also as a municipality on how are you going to mood board harbors, what is possible, what is not possible, uh, how, uh, should it be maritime and what uh, harbor should be not uh, as uh, much uh, maritime. Um, so that's that's uh, something uh, I'm interested in, uh, also about um, integrality, yeah? so the water uh, should not be seen as a, a single uh, asset, it should be um, outdoor, seen as outdoor space, uh, and uh, if you have m more water, you have more uh, outdoor space for your citizens and visitors to use. And uh, yeah, then then maybe there is also a possibility um, for for people around it to to make uh, more use of the water. Uh, so that's um, yeah, that's the challenge I think. And uh, we already asked to Hamburg, how are you coping with that? Are, um, the GmbH Hafen City, do you facilitate that? Uh, we saw some pictures of uh, uh, people sitting on a, on a pontoon thinking with uh, uh, the municipality about using the water. Yeah, of course, uh, we, that's something we should do also for the different uh, harbour backends uh, in uh, Rotterdam, yeah. Okay, Sander, thanks so much. Uh, Daan van der Haven, Water Taxi Rotterdam, can you give us a quick reaction? Yes, uh, good afternoon and uh, good afternoon. thank you for your presentation. Hamburg and uh, Meneer Dirks, Jeroen Dirks. Um, I, um, I am the co-founder of the Hotel New York in uh, uh, Rotterdam. We, we started this hotel uh, in uh, a territory which was still uh, customs. So it was very uh, comparable to uh, what happened in uh, Hamburg. It was a fantastic time, by the way, going through customs to uh, build our hotel. Uh, then we uh, we uh, we started uh, the Rotterdam uh, water taxi, and um, it uh, became uh, in the years that we did it, it, it became a, a big su success. It's and now it started to be um, the medium through which uh, uh, Rotterdam is uh, connected uh, uh, to the river, uh, the Rotterdam uh, people. We had more than uh, uh, 500,000 uh, visitors last year. This year, uh, a little less. Um, I am very, uh, as we are uh, on all the uh, um, caves on the river in uh, Rotterdam, we, we uh, see all the developments uh, uh, of the uh, city along the river. And uh, what, is, what is very uh, interesting is that uh, in Hamburg you have um, uh, a direction half and city that is um, uh, developing this whole uh, area in Rotterdam it's very different we have those um, uh, different uh, committees that are develop developing different parts of the city uh, in my view um, it um, it has a, a big disadvantage um, uh, meaning that um, we, um, how do I say it? That without uh, uh, thinking from the whole, uh, it's thinking from uh, the specific project that is uh, developed, and uh, in that way you uh, you see that there is no connection uh, when you talk about the whole of the uh, development. Mm. I think that connection with the whole of the development is very important when uh, one of the uh, big things is that um, the river should be uh, the identity of uh, a part of the identity of the city and it should be um, uh, developed in a way that uh, the people of Rotterdam really feel connected to this uh, river and I think uh, that you are doing that uh, in a good way when I uh, when I look at uh, your presentations. Um, well, I think that's um, uh, that's the, the the most important thing I have to say. Uh, furthermore, we in Rotterdam we also see that uh, the security on the water, with the mixture of uh, professional uh, uh, traffic and uh, recreational uh, traffic, is uh, really a challenging uh, thing. 
I uh, I wonder how you look at that uh, at that uh, thing. So that was my. Uh... Okay, thanks so much for your reactions. Uh, we don't have uh, much time uh, anymore. I'm sorry for that, but um, I think it's a good idea to to go back to the the questions uh, of uh, of Marco Vermeulen. Uh, he asked. Uh, I think uh, these are questions for. Um, um, well, I think Lucas and probably Tobias, um, who is uh, is in control uh, in the development uh, developments uh, on the water. How can uh, can you keep it safe? It's always also a question uh, from uh, from Dan van der Haven. That's uh, really a challenge, uh, security. Uh, um, yeah, I think these questions uh, it's good to start with. Uh, Tobias, is, are these questions for you or? or um... I think I think I'm I leave gladly leave some of the answers to Lucas, who's been okay. much more involved with the detail. But I just to say that I think it's a general. It's always a general issue to do with big waterways. Is in the end, um, people would love to be on paddle boats and do everything about it, but there is a real safety issue. Uh, the water flows fast. We have people drowning frequently, um, oh. not just people who are drunk, but also people who get swept away with waves playing by the beach. Uh, so so it's not a, an issue to be taken too lightly. This is not some sort of sunny beach in Malibu type thing or the Ostsee, which doesn't have a tidal difference. So we need to we need to be mindful of the costs of any of the uh, interventions of bridging the gaps on the safety. So no wonder we all both cities struggle a bit with all the um, uh, good ideas um, that, that there are around getting people to actually get into the water. But the potential is huge and the re reward for um, the city in terms of maximizing um, also, economic investment is is huge, and the appetite of people to make use of the water is increasing. So, so I think it's it's just a matter of uh, facilitating the various different stakeholders and owners and etc. And I think Lucas' point about um, maintenance once the port goes, uh, uh, and uh, we have ships going up and down the river, um, digging digging up the the sand that gets swept in by the tide every day, so the costs of those are prohibitive, which in some cases um, has the consequence of water waste being renaturalized almost by nature. So, so actually, in the um, in some of the canals, um, uh, they become unusable for uh, industrial shipping, but actually they can then be used back for ecology, and our um, our environmental department. Um, who care more about anything other than humans at times using the water are uh, very actively involved in trying to reclaim some of that um, man-made industrial post-industrial port space back to nature. And that also, uh, of course, offers lots of advantages for recreation. But I'll, I'll pass on to my colleagues for, for more um, uh, comments to those, given the time. Okay, Lucas, can you say more? Uh, who is in charge? Who can uh, keep it safe? Uh, how does it work in uh, in Hamburg? Mm, sure, yeah. Well, well the, the, like I showed on one slide, the waterways are still under the administration of the Hamburg Port Authority, as they are basically they are still part of the port, also in Hafen City, really. And they are not used as much for um, commercial shipping, mostly using now for tourist boats should driving people around but the port authority is maintaining them as part of the of the harbor that is uh, is i think something which then also goes to the security or the safety aspect is when it's a it's an active shipping way the main river biggest potential for use it differently is certainly the the small harbor basins that we have in half and city and i think that has been uh, also identified as a big potential or in the master plan already as where the idea of 
having blue infrastructure in place as a sometimes also as a replacement as of green infrastructure that you would have in other cities. But I, I, I think that is kind of then also the maybe something that we haven't realized early enough, maybe for the Hafen city development is that what does it mean calling it the blue infrastructure? So how do we activate it at the end? How do we finance those activities? I think that is is I think a struggle that we are still ongoing. And I think Tobias has also showed a lot of different other ideas, houseboats and so on. This is kind of so far has happened in some certain cases, but I'm 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 not sure whether we already have the definite answers or how to do it in the future, really. And we see that also in the class book where uh, uh, Jeroen has showed the the proposal of Herzog de Moran showed there and have also showed floating parts. Well, we will see whether there will be floating parts at the end. <laughs> I think that is something we both also struggle on the technical side as well as on the financial side. And, and I think that is something uh, we need to uh, keep in mind there. Um, maybe something someone raised also the question of noise. I mean, this is also something and, and also the safety in relation to industrial uses in the harbor. Um, we have a very complicated noise regulation in place here. So we have invented both on the technical side where we have specific called half and city windows. I mean, you can also now buy them for your personal house in other places, which are, <laughs> is a window where basically less sound goes through the opened window at the end. And then we have found an agreement to city with the federal uh, agency to basically come to a solution that if you measure noise, for instance, in a in a living environment, then you should measure it next to the ear of the person who is sleeping in his bed and not at the front of the window. Uh, and, and that way we kind of convince them that you can actually live close to an operating harbor at the end. So it sounds a bit cheeky at the end, but that is kind of the solution which we came up and that we will also use for for further developments here. Um, I think okay. there was one other question, but I, I ah, keeping the harbor within the city. Um, I, I think there's something, I think it's less of a challenge for Hamburg because man, Hamburg is a city state and we are kind of, the harbor is administratively locked to what is Hamburg. So different from Rotterdam, it can't really move out. Well, at least Hamburg wouldn't allow to do that, obviously, for economic reasons. Uh, so we have it very prominent when you walk uh, along the Zaha Hadid walkway, uh, you see the dry docks on the other side, which are active and so on. So you have very much this impression. And I think beyond this visual impression, obviously, which is sometimes maybe a little bit um, well, if you would ask the harbor, it's maybe uh, not very clear, but obviously we have a lot of different port related activities also in other parts of the cities. Uh, uh, office uses which are related to the harbor, etc. So I think that is it's still very alive there, maybe not as much on the small waterways, but at least on the big waterfront and, and how the uses, uh, the, the business models are interlinked. Okay, Lucas, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Linda, uh, Sophia, are there any questions uh, in the in the chat for us? Um, so far, Vera Konings had a question. Um, yeah. Matthias uh, has already answered it in the chat. Okay. I can still pose it if... Um, well, we don't have much time. Uh, let's first go to uh, our uh, director of, C of city development, uh, Rotterdam, Hermineke van Boksmeer, for some uh, closing words. And then we can uh, have a look if we have a one, uh, uh, room for one question afterwards. Hermineke, what do you want to say to us? Uh, well, um, good afternoon, uh, you all. And um, it's uh, this... Um, uh, our City Makes Conference is very inspiring because we travel all around the world and today I feel that I'm, I've landed in Hamburg. So uh, thank you for all the inspiring uh, pictures and talks and uh, I really like to go there and wander uh, along the shore. 
and I see quite some uh, similarities with the phase we are in in Rotterdam, with the Mare Vierhavens uh, area, with the um, uh, Rijnhaven, Maashaven we're working on. So I think it's very good that we exchange experience, uh, not only on um, the planning, uh, but also on the programming, on how you can use the historic canvas um, and modernize the same way. And also um, what I learned today about, um, um, well, where developers come in, uh, how the harbor um, uh, authorities come in and how we can work together. Um, so I hope this, that this afternoon helps us that when we have questions for uh, uh, Hamburg or the other way around, uh, that we can easily um, organize a chat like this yes. and uh, inspire each other. And uh, I think it was very good to see what we're doing on the land. But uh, as, as mentioned, uh, I'm also very interested in what we can do in the combination of the land and the water, because I think that is what something which is quite new for Rotterdam to, to really use the water. We, we don't have like, you know, a swimming pool in the water already or not that many paddling boats yet. Uh, and I think with the new um, ideas for Rijnhaven and Maashaven, we're really going to use these waters who are quite industrial and hard areas and make it softer and, and easy to uh, to use also as a, uh, just as a, as a person and not just as a, as a, as a business company. So um, I hope to see you uh, again and uh, let's work on the, the water atlas together and, um, and find new uh, new routes. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Hermineke, for your reaction. I think that th these are good uh, closing words, and uh, these uh, 90 minutes were, yeah, much too short to uh, to to speak with each other and to to uh, to uh, inspire each other. So so I think bye bye, Hermineke. So I think it's it's good to uh, to organize uh, another uh, chat uh, with each other and go a step uh, deeper in, uh, in, uh, in all the issues uh, we are working on, uh, on in Rotterdam. I think that's the best. And uh, for now, I want to, to close. Uh, yes, uh, 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 the follow-up, well, I, I would say, uh, let's uh, talk further with each other, Hamburg, uh, Rotterdam. And we are working this year, 2021 and 2022, at the, the Water Atlas and uh, 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 after uh, after that, uh, it, we are able to uh, make the good choices uh, with each other where we want uh, 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 and where we uh, support initiatives uh, in the in the water and uh, and at the waterfront. So uh, I want to have uh, 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 create room for one question. Is there one question, uh, Sophia? We can uh, we can uh, uh, answer probably in the yes. chat. Yes. Yes, there is. Um, there is a question from uh, Y de Jong, and his question is: uh, The city of Rotterdam reaches out to creative citizens and small entrepreneurs to settle in harbor areas. How does Haven City engage with them? Okay, so that's a question for. Um, uh, for Haven City, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, for Lucas. <laughs> uh, well, I think Tobias wanted to answer oh, something, so I, I, I leave it to him, but I could just say that we went last year as a company uh, to Rotterdam to exactly learn from Rotterdam about that aspect. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't invented anything new since then. <laughs> I, think, um, I think the creative uh, industries, um, which we have... Uh, organized in Hamburg between the Hafen City Company and the city ourselves. We've got a creative company. Hamburg likes to set up companies for all sorts of things. Um, it's partly, partly divide and conquer, I'd say, so you see this term, but I, actually it works really well. And um, and they have the, taken up some of the some of the buildings within the Hafen City to set up uh, space for growing companies. But I think you, you and us are pretty much on the same level as in, in terms of uh, exploring that further, um, and we have a lot of uh, we have a lot to learn from each other on that point particularly. But it's it's one of the great ways of uh, 
making use of old buildings, getting new companies, getting young people to the water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. It's it's five o'clock. Uh, uh, for me, it was uh, uh, all very uh, inspiring. So I hope we will meet again soon, uh, uh, another time online, I guess. And uh, for now, uh, have a very good uh, good evening, and um, we'll see you again very soon, hopefully. Okay, bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye all. Bye bye. 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 Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot for the, the presentations. Thanks a lot, Hamburg. <laughs>